Mr. Finchley. Oh, time's up. Let's go. Supposed to be nice. Very. Ladies and gentlemen. Not one of those shaggers. It's so. now my honor no. to bring to the stage. He's married. The Think. presenter of the final award. You know him as Bullseye Bill. Nick Peter. Here's the call to the man. Oh, shit, 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 shit. No need, really. Honestly, no need. Because I am not receiving the Lifetime Achievement Award. Aww. I am, however, presenting it. So think of me as John the Baptist paving the way for Jesus Christ. <laughs> Sorry, Mrs., but if you think that's blasphemous, you should have heard what I said when I found out who had won it. <laughs> what can I say about this man? He's a man I've spent most of my life beside. A man best known to you and to me as, as, Carl! <laughs> yes, yes. Not yet, mate, not yet. He was described in The Guardian as the natural successor to David Jason. And by David Jason as the man who takes all the jobs I turn down. In his later years, he's added acting to his many talents, and a proper acting, mind you. None of the dicking about he and I used to do, no. Indeed, he was hugely praised at the Times for his epic performance as Richard III. I made the joke about them preferring my bottom. <laughs> the winner of this award, and I can say this, ladies and gentlemen, because he has absolutely no idea he's getting it, is a... Uh, devastatingly handsome. Devastatingly handsome. Wholesomely kind, wonderfully generous. He's... Play the game, mate. There's people watching. He's kind, <laughs> apparently, and generous. He's got an arse that can crack nuts. And he's got an arse that can... What? <laughs> he's got an arse that can crack coconuts. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the only man I know who's vain enough to invade his own stage. <laughs> and the winner of this year's Lifetime Achievement Award, I give you, and you're very welcome to him, <laughs> the one, the only, Sir Carl Jenkins. <laughs> You look tired. Yeah. It's very nice, isn't it? Well, it's not as if I was getting the award, is it? Do you want it? You can have it. To give it to you. Yeah, but it's for both our work. Magnanimity was always a stretch for you, wasn't it? 
Really need a piss. Have I got time for a piss? The trouble is you're the last award after this. Oh, he can hold it in. He's got exceptional bladder control for a man of his own. <laughs> if you want to go, Paul. Really? You don't need me? I think they got your quotes already, don't you? Ah, oh, in that case, I shall have a piss. And um, pity poor Carl here. Carl, honestly, truly deserved. It's nonsense. It's all nonsense. Speech. Well, I thought it was important that Carl got all the big laughs. Mm. <laughs> Huge fan, of the way. Oh, likewise. I grew up much in your routines. Yeah, that was a long time ago now. Well, with repeat fees, nothing so long time ago. I'm having similar thoughts. Simon, how unlike you to find the bit with the Scorchers. She's dating Greg Davies. She's not. And uh, saying scorchers makes you sound about 450. Shall we dance? Two lets. Well, <laughs> great speech, mate. What a great event. Simon? Hi, Tom. Tom's too rude to introduce me, and my manager is too shit. <laughs> so I must introduce myself. I'm Paul Fusley. Sir, uh, you're a legend. You've no need to introduce yourself to anyone in this room. You'll go fine. Oh, he already has. He's, uh, he's just taken over as director of daytime. Fuck it. They get younger and younger. Well done, young man. Sir. <laughs> Shit, you called me sir. Well, I must call you Lord. <laughs> well done, Lord Television. I'm pretty sure that... Be my boss. <laughs> you do it. Will you do it for us? Go be a mate. Milk sour, not surprised. But then them cows are a moody bunch. <laughs> right, that's great, that's genius. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Black tie suits you. And may I say, Dan, no one looks better. Holding a bin. <laughs> Hello, buddy. Get him to sleep, okay? Well, I couldn't get Billy off that damn game thing, but yeah. Hmm. Alan Carr was excellent, actually. What a lovely man. I always thought you should be on that show. I know, darling, you sir, but I don't really. I don't think people see me that way, do they? At what point do comics stop being funny and start being sweet? Hmm? Even Spike, they even did it to Spike. They even turned Spike sweet. And he was an awful shite. <laughs> yeah, bad woman. <laughs> Anyone else worth talking to? Not a soul. No. Nope. I always think after these events, you know, I think I made a total arse of myself. Well, it was a nice big clap, though. Yeah, that means nothing, though. That's the, that's the Stalin thing, isn't it? No one wants to be the first to stop clapping the old guard. Car got a bigger one, anyway. Only oh, just. Now, I just can't help thinking I made an awful fool of myself. And I think you've still got whiskey sloshing around in that gut of yours. I'll get your banana, and then we'll get into bed, OK?
Kitty cat. You know she doesn't like you up there. Good morning, Emma. Were you Jobbies? We watch you on the TV. Oh, yeah? What do you think? You are funny. You can hold a big glass. Grandma laughs loads. <laughs> Good morning, Billy. You free today? I'm dropping these to their dads, and then I've got lunch with Annapolis. They might contribute to the foundation. Where were Greeks bearing gifts? You say that every time. They're American. I always thought morning city, Jim. They never tell you that. More or less every day. Are you winning at least? It's not about winning. Ah, it's about taking part. Mm hmm. So, what's the plan for today? Morning jog, lunch in town, aerobics classes, mass scientific experiment. Or are you going to just lounge around here all day doing nothing again? I'll get it. Mrs. Finchley? Yes. My name is D.I. Palmer. This is D.S. Georgeson. We're here for a word with your husband. Word about what? There's been an allegation of rape made against you. This is a warrant for the search of your premises. Some kind of joke. Grandad? <sighs> Sorry, buddy. Sorry, son. On Simon. No. What's going on? We weren't aware your grandchildren were in the house. Can your wife arrange alternative care? I want to make this as easy as possible for you. Sorry, um, you're accusing me of what? sent me. Needless to say, it's an honor to be working with you. I love your work. He says you're the best. Let's hope I grow to love your work. Now, this is Jimmy Savile. They think I'm Jimmy fucking son. Okay, so here's where we are. I never liked him. I was kept him well away from the parties. He wanted to come. But it was me. I said, fuck, no, no way. Everybody knew he was dodgy. Everybody. But I'm the one with the cops outside the house and my grandchildren inside. We don't have much time, so save the bluster and just listen if you could. We don't know what they know or what they think they know, but I'll tell you this, they won't be getting any clues from our end. So say as little as possible. Clues? I didn't do this. Big fan, by the way. Every Christmas is a bit of a tradition. We work through the whole of Crooked Peaks, all 36 episodes. Thank you. Absolutely hilarious. 
What's the start of difficult to do? Well, it's not what I went to Rada for. <laughs> and now you've got your own game show? Yes. We call it a quiz. OK, let's start at the beginning. Full name, please. Paul Thomas Finchley. And date birth? 9th of February, 1950. And you have children? Yes, a daughter, Danielle, D. And she's had children? Yes. Billy's 14 and Francis is 10. And they live with their father? Yes. Why is that? Um, Dee's at a pretty rough time recently. She's in a treatment centre for addiction. Halfway she's... house. And your parents, they're deceased? Yes. Killian and Molly Finchley? Sorry? Oh, Irish? Yes, I was born there, and though I was brought up here, well, in Scotland. Reading some press articles about you, and you explained you wouldn't write an autobiography because some skeletons best remain skeletons. Were you referring to your father in that instance? No, I wouldn't. No comment. Did this refer to sexual abuse? No comment. And that's unnecessary, even for a fishing expedition. So you've been married 41 years, is that right? Yes. Impressive number. And it's been largely happy? Extremely. Tell me about Mari. Well, she's, um, she's kind. And she's generous. And she's funny. And religious. And I think she's the best person I know. This will break her. You have no idea. Have you managed to stay faithful to Mari? No comment. And sexually, would you describe yourself as a man of average or greater than average sexual habits? You expect him to know what average is. I have absolutely no idea what average is. I'd advise you to answer your questions yourself, Mr. Finchley. I would describe myself as a man with average sexual appetite. Are there any sexual practices that you engage in which you think most people would regard as unusual? No comment. OK, so we've had an allegation from Rebecca Thornton. Does that name mean anything to you? No comment. Rebecca Thornton alleges that on the 8th of December 1993, you raped her on the film set of Japes in Bedford. Can you remember any details from that night? No. Does that face mean anything to you? Means nothing, sorry. She, she must have made a mistake. Great. That concludes the interview. Let's get you bailed, shall we? I really don't know her, you know. Oh, no need to say anything more. Interview terminated at 11.43 a.m. You arrested him at 7.48. I make that three hours and 55 minutes. I'd say leave him by the back. Might be a good idea. Everyone's a pat with their smartphones nowadays. tidy up after themselves. They tried to, but they didn't do a very good job. I wasn't sure, you know, because you had your lunch. I wasn't sure you... took my computer as well as yours. They took a lot of things, actually. They showed me some of them. They shouldn't have what they did. Did you have a cup of tea? It could be quite useful. It could as be tidied, turn it into a spring clean. Mary. Porn on your phone. Who watches porn on their phone? Can you get the laptop open quick enough? Mary. The questions they ask me. About you, about us, about what we do in the bedroom. I mean, whatever it is they think you've done. Mary, you must listen to me. I didn't do Can this. Can you tell me? I mean, did, did you know what else they might find? There's nothing to find. It's just a desperate woman being desperate. No. 
You're not going up there. But I need to lie down for a bit. You can lie on the sofa. The times you came home smelling of whichever woman, and I'd understand. Well, this is not one of those times. It can't be. Do you understand? Please, Mary. I would prefer it if you did not lie on our bed. Not today. Sorry, I'll put that in the stupid questions draw. Let us not speak of it again. He's in the den. <sighs> Wasn't sure whether to come round or not. <clears throat> he interviewed you too, did he? Nice looking black girl. Woman. Yes. Yes, I got her too. So, were you there during any of the alleged? Apparently not, but they weren't sure. Didn't give full details. No, I don't think you should give me full details. Show me a photo. I didn't sleep with her. I didn't remember her. Simon says he sorted your lawyer. Flashy type, useful, I think. Hope. <laughs> I fell asleep watching some really shitty cookery program and woke up halfway through Crooked Peaks. Which one? The one where we tried to become members of the Women's Institute. Good. Dated, but it has some good moments. <laughs> Carl, I'm sorry this hasn't been good for you either. I'm just going to hit residuals hard. Residuals? Do you really think I give a shit about residuals right now? I'm not sure I can do this. <laughs> of course you can. Well, send me over. I'm not in the bedroom. That's what you're... No, um, <clears throat> I just needed some clean clothes. I didn't want to disturb you. If I'm guilty, I'd say I was innocent. If I'm innocent, I would say I'm innocent. Don't know what to say. There's nothing to say. Not going to be cheap, this, you know that. Well, we spend whatever it takes to get you off, don't we? Do we?
I know I've not treated you well at times. But you must know, I didn't do this. I believe you. Bollocks. They knew. They fucking knew. What? For telling us to leave around the back? Apparently, they had local press there on an unrelated matter. Cunts. Look, I tried calling. You need to leave your phone on from now on. I was asleep. Well, I wanted to get here before the reporters did. Now everyone will know. Well, they were going to find out sooner or later. But don't worry. I'll fuck them back. Good to meet you, Murray. But why? Why would they do this? Fishing. They're fishing to see if anyone else comes forward. They're testing you, Paul. I am, I am, I am unprepared to respond to these allegations. But I will say that, um, <clears throat> I am fully cooperating with the police, and I am innocent. Of course, um, obviously, I would like some privacy at this difficult time. I recognize that that's very unlikely to happen, but my family are not and have chosen not to be part of the public world. Thanks for coping with all that. I decided to run the meter. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. You've done something with your hair. Not sure I have. I'm not sure you have either. Force a habit. My life surrounded by women. It's always safe to say you've done something with your hair because generally they have. Not exactly. Um, Six. How are you? Still getting the checks? It's a bank transfer, Dad, so I'm pretty much guaranteed to get them. This stuff in the papers. What stuff's that? Well, you've not seen it. Of course I've seen it. I was just wondering whether you'd mention it or not. You don't think they've been here? You just say no comment. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Yeah, and I know. It's going to be hard for you. So I'm just here to say I support you. Oh, that's moving, Dad. Thank you. We had Billy and Francis over for the bank holiday, did you know? Yep. I think they only come to us because we give them more chocolate than their dad. You let Francis eat chocolate? Well, shouldn't I? Why was one of you giving me a look when I ate it? She's as skinny as a rake, that girl. She could do with some flesh on her bones. Well, that's an interesting thing to say. Is it? Ideas of a female shape that neither me or my daughter, according to you, conform to. Isn't that interesting? Oh, look. Do you remember this? Christ, we're not doing. Do you remember when, are we? No, Sheffield, 1991. That Bill Forsyth film. You and your mum came up for the whole winter. You won a competition when you were out there. Some youth talent thingy, and you sang. Wow, oh, I can't remember now. Really, I can't remember any of it. Well, what's it doing there then? Mum put the photo up. She said it was a happy time, and I believed her. I mean, a lovely wee singer then, you know. 
Yeah, I remember you telling me that. Uh -huh. You told me that quite a lot. Yes. Mum says you've been visited by a priest. <laughs> we didn't just randomly turn up. I invited him. Right. Why? I wanted to see if I could suck his cock. No, you didn't. Why? I had this theory that maybe you might be able to save me from hell. I've been having this dream. You're in it. Right. You're not sure whether to be pleased or scared, are you? Well, it's important for you to tell me. It's important for me to listen. You've been listening in therapy. I'm impressed. We're by a lake. We're having a picnic. What lake? Does that matter? Oh, well, yes. I want to identify if it's a lake we've been to or been near. You know, what with your memory? Yeah, well, I don't think it's historical. It's me, you, Dave and the kids. I don't think we ever took a trip to a lake with the full family. Mama made a picnic. Definitely not, Dave. It's interesting that he's there. Not really. It's quite a big picnic. And I think she baked the bread. She's, like, really gone all out, you know? It's like cheese sandwiches with tomato bread and everybody was making too much of a fuss about them. Interestingly, we've just got a new bread maker. She's making some very strange combinations. One, two, three. Anyway, you and the kids went off for an explore, and we all lay back, sunny day, and Dave took his top off. And I said he shouldn't in front of Mum. And he said, she doesn't mind, do you, Mari? And winked. And she said nothing. And so I took my top off. <laughs> top and bra. And he was pissed off, but he said nothing. And then you came back with the kids. And I put my top back on but left off my bra. And you had this stone that you'd found in the stream, and you were fucking proud of this stone. What kind of stone? It was quite special, actually. It was almost perfectly black, and everybody admired it. And you said you thought it was the hardest stone you'd ever felt. But Dave wasn't having that. He said, all stones are hard, Paul, they're stones. And then you started talking about how some stones are, in fact, softer than others, and not just chalk. Uh, you know, for a woman who claims to recollect nothing, these are an impressive set of memories. Do you know that? And then the argument got more and more heated, and then finally, to prove how hard the stone was, you just smacked him around the head with it. And he fell to the floor, bleeding. And you just stared at him. And then he looked at me. And then down at my tits. And I hadn't put my bra back on. And I knew my nipples were hard. And you said, well, Better hit him again, otherwise he'll report it, won't he? And you told Mum to take the kids away, but they wanted to stay. And you must have clobbered Dave six or seven times. Then he stopped and said, nobody must ever know what happened here. And we all made a vow of secrecy. What do you think that one means, then? Have you spoken to your doctors about it? No. Just the priest. And what did the priest have to say about it? That's when he let me blow him. Oh, Daniel. What? Is she joking? Is she not? Isn't it dangerous? We may never know whether she sucked the dick of a priest. He said that he didn't think that I should see you. <clears throat> and he said not to let you in the next time that you came. I would never hurt you, or Dave, or any of my family. You know, you know that. <clears throat> you realize I'm about to be dragged through hell, don't you? Aren't we all? Don't you have the slightest bit of sympathy? I thought you came around here to support me, not for my sympathy. I mean, I'm quoting you there. Well, whatever I came around here for, clearly it was a mistake. Yeah. 
Yeah, it probably was. Then I'll go. I am worried about you. I'm worried about everything. Whatever anyone says. You haven't told me it's bullshit, yeah? Of course it fucking is. I don't know what you want me to say, but I want you to know there's a big part of me that wants me to say it. Okay. It's me. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm, I'm speaking from a phone box, but you're to know. Hmm. Can I trust you? For the full night. Do you know, the thing I envy most about the beautiful woman is the curve of the spine. The tragedy of a beautiful woman is that that curve fades. It doesn't disappear, but it does fade. Marie tried very hard. She was a beautiful woman. She was a very beautiful woman. Of course, the tragedy of being a man is that we're never beautiful. But at least there's no beauty to fade. I mean, I know there's handsome men, but beautiful ones. I'm not saying that I'm... I always thought I was rather funny looking. Distinguished. You look distinguished. You could make money, you know, now that I'm... You can make money out of me. I won't. Why not? Because I don't want the attention. I like that. You're not pretending it's out of some affection for me. I do like that. I have some affection for you, but it's not my reason. You do it. You do it. No. Sorry, I didn't think. I thought we cancelled. No. No? No. <sighs> Shit, sorry. Ah. Hello, Carl. So I get the accusations and he gets the airtime. Hmm? First things first, I want you to know there's no truth to any of this uh, stuff. Our first concern, Paul, is to chat that you're OK. Well, I'm fine, but I'd like you to ignore, I'm asking you to ignore all the shite they're writing about me in the papers. It's simply the local constabulary flexing its arms. Yeah, it's just background noise. As far as I'm concerned, it's just, yeah, I'm not an audience. So this is assurance that yes, it won't Simon, affect... Yes, Simon, Simon. Listen, I know in the audience's eyes this might be slightly different, but I reckon I could do a Deaton or a Ross on this one, you know? Brazen it out, turn it into a joke. I'm not sure what the joke would be, but we could hammer that out with the writers. After all, country where you're innocent until proven guilty. 
Well, we very much agree with that last statement. The trouble is, if I can cut in, Tom, of course. this isn't like Angus Deaton or Jonathan Ross. Uh, Deaton was cocaine and prostitutes, and Ross was a uh, bad judgment. Yeah, yeah, they were a bit, they made a mistake, a mistake they admitted to. And in both cases, you're talking about late night comedy shows, not smuggle or late afternoon quiz, which was occasionally funny, it has a very different audience. I can see where you hired him, very smart. So the show is off air? Actually, we're thinking of bringing in a temporary replacement. Someone to guide Smuggle in your temporary absence. Right. Clever. Who are you thinking of? We're sounding out a few people. You're not going to say? Not until we hear from them. Well, so long as the show survives unscathed. Yes. A lot of good crew work on Smuggle, you know? They should be protected. It's just someone to keep your seat warm until you come back. Right. Hello, buddy. Part of me thought you'd killed yourself. I mean, I must have called you a hundred times. Press were calling me every two minutes. My battery went flat. I went into a shop to charge it, but they recognised me. You didn't... I mean, it, it didn't occur to you to let me know where you were. I thought they might be bugging my line. Just wanted to escape. Where did you go? I was getting very angry and, uh, and ugly. I thought it best to be in my Where own. did you go? I visited D. Yes. I know you visited D. And then? And then I went to the channel to discuss implications of that. You went to a meeting at Channel fucking four. And in between, I spent the night with somebody. Oh. I'm sorry. About which bit? Your Jerome called. He wants you at the office. He wants us both there. Maybe time for a shower. It sounded urgent, so let's just get it done, shall we? Mari, this is Jerry. Mm. He's an ex-detective sergeant. He's going to be working with us. Is he? It's always useful to have an ex-cop around. Well, I'm a useful insider. That's what I like to say. He's good. Great. I've got to say, really don't approve of the stunt they pulled with the photograph. Really unnecessary. Though it has worked. OK, so we're going to need to speak frankly. Uh, Mari, maybe you want to step outside and we'll bring you in later? I'd rather not. Paul? There's very little my husband's done that I've not been aware of. His affairs have not been subtle. Fine. The search of the house we can deal with. Uh, the computer is still in the labs, but they previewed the porn you'd watched on your phone. Quite violent. Nothing truly extraordinary. I've seen worse. But I wish you'd forewarned me. And uh, they found quite considerable evidence of infidelity. Again, nothing truly extraordinary. But... Well, you put it around a bit. Hmm? You're famous. Juries don't like it, mind you. Particularly if you presented yourself as a family man. There are two things which are trickier. One, the photos have had an effect. Seven women now have come forward. Seven? That's a pretty typical number, nothing to be too concerned about. They could be... I'm not a... Fame seekers, they could be money seekers, they could have convinced themselves it's true. Or it could be true. The one we're worried about is this girl. Christina Farnborough. She's our babysitter. The claim is sexual assault, not rape. This is nonsense. Multiple claims, some in a car, one attack, she says, happened inside your home with your daughter upstairs. Christina was 15. I said, you're a pedophile. It's just a girl. This is horseshit. We've been asked to bring you in again, and we've agreed to do so. So we have an hour, and in that hour, I want to know everything. You understand? Because we won't hear what they've got for a long, long time. 
Until then, we've won advantage. You. So, let's start at the beginning, shall we? Do you think I'm Jimmy fucking Savile? 